Hey everyone, welcome to Wikicode. Where in this video, we're going to learn how to connect a Node application to a Postgres database using the Node Postgres or PG NPM library. So, if we want to add persistence to a Node application, we can use the relational database PostgreSQL. To begin, let's first initialize a directory as an NPM project by using npm init y. This command creates a package.json file, which we can see right here, to hold information about the project. The dash y flag provides default information to this file as opposed to us typing it in manually. And now, to connect Node to Postgres, we're going to use the PG NPM library. This library is a pure JavaScript implementation of a PostgreSQL client. A PostgreSQL client is essentially a connection to a PostgreSQL server that can issue commands in database operations. Now we can see PG listed under dependencies. So there are two different ways to connect to Postgres with the PG library, a client and a pool. Both of these objects are exported from the PG library. To use them, let's create an index.js file and import them. So a client is one static connection to the Postgres server, while a pool is a dynamic number of clients that have automatic, automatic reconnect functionality. In other words, the pool object is a connection pool, while the client object is a single connection. A connection pool should be used in applications they need to handle concurrent requests or frequent queries. This is because connecting to the PostgreSQL server carries a fair amount of overhead. For this demonstration, we will use the pool object. But so, the best way to provide connection information to Postgres is through environment variables. This is so we can set up different databases for development and production. To easily work with environment variables in Node, we use the .env library. The .env library loads environment variables from a .env file into Node's process.env object. To work with this, let's create a file called development.env and place some environment variables inside. So these are the environment variables that we will use to connect to Postgres and the user variable is the database user. A fresh Postgres database will have the predefined user called Postgres. Host is the location of the PostgreSQL server. Here, the server is running on our computer or local host. Database is the name of the database. Most Postgres servers have the database called Postgres defined by default. Password is the password to access PostgreSQL. The default Postgres password is Postgres, though it will be the password used when PostgreSQL server was created. Port is the port that PostgreSQL server is running on. By default, this is port 5432. But now, let's load this environment file into our Node application with .env. So this config function from the .env library loads the environment variables into process.env. We can pass it to the path option to accept a path to the environment variable file, which here is our current directory, and then development.env, which is the location of this file. We can also provide the override option, which will override any environment variables already set on our system. Of course, when more environments are added, the path should not be hard-coded like it is here, but rather a dynamic path to the environment variables applicable to the chosen environment. So now let's actually connect to PostgreSQL with a pool. So to connect to Postgres with a connection pool, we instantiate a pool object. We then need to supply it with the environment variables that we created inside our development.env file. So 
So this pool is initially empty and clients are created when they are needed. Now, to ensure that we are connected, let's query the PostgreSQL server. First, let's check out a client from the pool. This is done with the connect method. We will wrap this all in an asynchronous IIFE so we can use the await keyword. So now that we've checked out a client or connection from the pool, we can use that client to query the Postgres server. We can query it with the query method and extract the returned rows from the response. Let's get the current user, which here is the Postgres user. Let's also wrap all this inside a try catch and finally. So we need to wrap this query inside a try catch finally block so that we can release the client back into the pool once we've used it. We want to do this whether the query was successful or not. This is because if we don't release the client back into the pool, then soon the pool will be depleted and there will be no clients to handle any requests. However, if we want the node Postgres library to handle checking out and releasing clients from the pool for us, we can call the query method directly on the pool as opposed to the connection checked out from the pool. But before we do that, let's just run this to make sure everything's working. We run it with node and then the name of the file, index.js. And nothing happened because we need to call our IFE by having this here. And what I got is auth failed. And it's because my default password is not Postgres, but on my localhost, it's just T O O R. So if we try this again, and we get logged out the current, current user, which is Postgres. But now let's call the query method directly on the pool. And here we get the same response where the current user is Postgres. And what's nice about this, once again, is that the PG library handles checking out a connection from the pool and returning it to it by itself. We don't have to manually check out the connection here, query it, and then release it like we do if we check out a connection from the pool. And this connection is essentially the same as working with this client right here. So this is my video on connecting Node to Postgres. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Besides that, I wanna thank you for watching and subscribing today. And I hope to see you in the next one. Have a good one.